this is Deanna with Stitches Quilting. We, I am working right now on a panel that is from the Zombie Apocalypse um, collection, fabric collection, that is designed by Emily Taylor, and it is uh, printed by Riley Blake, and with it comes this panel that is a zombie doll and there's a a nice side of this zombie doll and then there is a scary side of the zombie doll and then she has some zombie legs and she has a zombie dog that um that i don't know if there's really a nice side and a scary side to the zombie dog but i thought before i assembled them together i would long arm some things on these these items so if you can see here, this is some stitching that I've long-armed on here and I've stitched around the eyes just to make her look a little bit more zombie-ish. And for the girl, I went ahead and I made flowers on her. I see um, I was using a metallic thread and I made some flowers on her little dress and kind of came down and made some little... Um, I don't know something a little bit more girly and feminine some little swirls and over here in order to make her look a little bit more scary I kind of did just some really fast lines down here that weren't as as swirly and so um oh you're headed to Salt Lake that's really awesome for PCS what is that what is that? How very fun. Um, oh, for ARMY. How fun. Okay, very good. For, for um, very good. Yes, in fact, we have a young, uh, a young man that has worked for us for probably six years that was a caregiver for my son that is in basic training right now in the ARMY, and he's actually in North Carolina right now. But let me go ahead and, in fact, he would love these things. But... Um, my husband is definitely a zombie fan and also some of my kids. And so um, uh, here I stitched around her eyes to kind of make it look a little bit more scary. I don't know if you can see that better with some light. And over here I kind of accentuated her little eyelashes with a thread to go ahead and go like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to stitch um, her legs. So I'm going to show you where the needle is right there. I know that it is kind of silly and goofy, but um, this is a really cute collection. You know what? Let me show you the other fabrics in the collection before this, before I start st stitching. There's some fun fab zombie fabrics. Sorry, I had to grab those fabrics, but you can see right here, this is a fat quarter collection for Riley Blake Designs, and it is called Zombie Apocalypse. It's designed by Emily Taylor for Riley Blake, and these fat quarters of fabric, um, they actually have little zombie designs on them, but there's a gray and a light blue and a cream, another gray a white, a light blue, and then some kind of skeleton type faces over there. They're really pretty cute. Um, but this is a fat quarter collection. This is from her collection last year. So I really have, I think two of these only left to sell and who knows, might want to keep one to play around with. This is Emily Taylor's and Riley Blake's newest um, zombie collection of fabric. It's called Zombie Love. And with the Zombie Love collection, this is for 2015, it is a little bit more feminine than the other one. I don't know if you can have a feminine type collection there. Let me pull up my arm here. But the fabrics for this one are this really cute little zombie girl and guy getting ready to be married. There's a really sweet little um, flower that goes with it. Here's the main print 
that's in like a pink and they she has Emily Taylor designed some little skeleton hands with hearts I just I think her artwork is just so sweet um, I mean the way that she's you know, as a surface pattern designer, I mean, I just think this is so darling how she's taken the concept of, of putting skeleton hands in the shape of a heart and then plopping just a couple hearts in there, not too many hearts. So it's too hearty. It still has that Halloween flavor. But here's a few more of the color waves of this fabric where there's a gray flower that's a coordinating. And I like how it's more of a, a lighter daisy um, just kind of a whimsical feel the white background and then the black background there is then um, another colorway of this right here but you can see here the zombie is giving the girl his heart um, there's actually some cute little pictures on this fabric that I think would be fun to work with um, you know you've got I don't know sometimes it's fun Love never dies, you know, and there's a guy zombie with his heart, as his eyes, and then here's her picking the flowers to the, I would love to become a fabric designer, I don't know about you guys, but I think this one's so cute with the guy giving her flowers, and she's, I don't know, she seems maybe delighted with her hearty eyes, we saw the image of the guy giving her the heart. And it's just some really cute, clever things, a different kind of spin than something. Here's a tunnel of love. And you can see they're getting ready to go on a boat ride. Right there, this fabric's kind of folded a little bit from the fat quarter, but they're getting ready to go on a boat ride into the tunnel of love. I mean, I don't know. I think it's so darling, the imagination and the artwork that goes into some of these pieces. So that's what one of these mains are like. And then, so there's three different pieces and three different colorways. There's the hearts with the skeletons. And then there's the three main prints of the pink, the cream, and the gray um, with that. And I mean, it's cute. The last year's collection, um, so that's what 2015 looks like. And we're gonna do some different things with zombies on my blog this month. We're going to actually um, make this zombie doll. So what I'm long-arming right here is a zombie um, panel that came with the zombie apocalypse collection. So this is from the 2014 collection. I do have about maybe nine of these left. And, you know, sometimes I, I'm not always attracted to do panels very often, but um, I'm actually you know going to have fun to do this one and do it some little extra things to it another thing that you probably can't tell is that i actually zigzagged on her hair and then made her hair curly so but i thought we'd go ahead and work on the zombie legs last year's um collection had the color waves of the gray the blue the cream and some orange in there so that's what was in the 2014 so we're gonna just set these up here. And I thought, there's two legs here. These are actually cut out. I have a piece of batting underneath here that is a warm and natural batting, and then it's on, on muslin. So when I cut out these, these this, the pieces of the panel to sew this the doll together and the dog together, it will actually be quilted and give it a little bit more form and texture than just being a, a stuffed, animal or a stuffed doll so which out of light fabric so I'm gonna go ahead I, I'm using this this green I'm gonna put this down so you can see the needle now but you can see I'm um, let me get this camera to hold just the right way so you can see the needle and the actual long arming but you can see I'm using an actually a green slightly green metallic thread and you know, I this is kind of like a, a cream, but it's really a cream with a green a green hint to it. So what I thought might be fun on this, and I don't know, you guys, give me some ideas for long arming this, but I thought it might be fun on this scarier 
leg, which it's more sewn like a tube. And so this leg is, has one side, and one leg is scary, the other side is not. So I thought on the scary leg, it might be fun to do a plaid, but a zigzaggy plaid type pattern. And over here, do just like a traditional plaid, or I could do something swirly and cute. I don't know. Maybe I'll just stick with the plaid idea. Does anyone else have any other ideas? I'm not quite sure. And I really have no idea how to long arm the dog. I could actually long arm a pattern of bones. I mean, his name is Bones. So I could long arm bones actually on there and um, do something like that. Maybe again with the gray thread. These are Bones' ears right here. And there's another side to the ears also. And then there's some arms. So I'm gonna go ahead and and do this. If you have any ideas, please let me know, but I'm gonna do the zigzag plaid. So let's go ahead and get you down where you can see the needle working. And I'm gonna go ahead and go like that. Let me hold this thread taut. I'm not gonna pull the needle up. And I'm gonna just start like this. Just some zigzags to cross the leg. I should try to maybe hold the camera myself so it's not so. Move that. So you're not vibrating this machine as I go back and forth. This might give it a little bit more of a scarier look. around often especially when you're working with metallic threads and you especially when you're working with metallic threads the threads can really easily break on um, with a long arm machine so let me go ahead and trim this and I will very quickly get this threaded back on there but does anyone have an idea or do you the one the person I have on there does anyone have an idea of how to long arm the the dog I just really I'm I'm not sure certain what would be maybe just the bones just long arm little bones on there okay so let me go ahead and do this now if you don't have a long arm machine which most people don't this is still something that you could do on a regular sewing machine that would work really well. I'm gonna bring this thread down a little bit more. It seems like it got a little damaged. And I'm gonna thread this needle just very quickly. But you can definitely do this on a domestic machine, um, especially some of the things I'm doing. If you're not familiar with how to do that, I can do a YouTube video for you on that. I'm going to start right around, how about right here, where this thread ended. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in, and we're going to pull that back up. Normally I just pull that thread back. Let me hold the camera again so you don't have too much vibration. Like 
over here. Um, this leg right here, I'm going to just do some straight lines because it's supposed to not be the the scary line. But you can see there's a little bit of a a, a glitter, a metallic look to the thread. And here I did flowers on the nice girl. And over here, the girl, she does, she looks scary. I don't know. I, I long-armed her to look a little scary freaky. So this is a reversible doll. One side is not zombie. The other side is zombie. So we're going to, I did this leg as a zombie leg. We'll do this leg as a non-zombie leg. And even if you look at the difference between these two legs, let's bring the light up here a little bit closer from the machine. If you look at the difference between these two legs, I mean, just looking at that, it really makes a difference to actually quilt it and to quilt your material before you sew something together like this. And it really gives it a, a different dimension, a different feel. It's going to have some structure in there because there's batting and there's a muslin backing behind it. I just used a warm and natural um, backing and I just used scraps because I really just needed to make sure that there were pieces that fit around here. So there's no sense, you know, going out and buying new batting. But I actually used a nice thin batting and I think it will really come together quite nicely. I'm going to go, I will go ahead and thread this machine again. The, unfortunately, the thread once again knotted because of my zigzags there. But let me go ahead and get this done. So any suggestions for that, that bones? It's been interesting to think of ways to go ahead and videotape as you're long arming. I might actually be able to, um, you can see me um, thread the needle which you don't really need to see. Let me give you the other fabric to look at while I do this. Um, this fabric I do have for sale. I don't know it's really everybody's taste for Halloween fabric, but it's kind of playful, especially if you know someone that likes The Walking Dead. I don't know. It's just a cute little collection, and it's been kind of fun to do some different things for fall um, demos and also tutorials on the blog to give at least some different things. If you're going to do some zombie things there, at least it's not too freaky, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'll do a periscope tomorrow of actually um, assembling this, this little gal. And let's go ahead and bring this back up so you can see the stitches here. So now we're going to go ahead and let's bring it over here. And we're going to just do some nice lines. Nice. And how about let's give it a little bit of a wave. Pull that first part out. And just give it a nice kind of wave. Back and forth. So it's supposed to be the non scary leg. This, this, this would be very simple to do on a sewing machine or to do, um, you could even do just straight lines and make it have a little sad look. In fact, let's go ahead and do this again. Bring this up again over here. Let's see. This place. And it's a little bit of weight, so it's almost like a flat weight. is done. Um, so you can see now we have these two different legs. One is 
the little scratchy looking thing there. And then we've got this little feel over here. And I, I think it it makes it looks good. I don't know what to do with the dog. What do you think? Should we try bones? Should we what should we try on this this dog? I think the green thread is gonna look on, nice on top of that gray. Um, here's a piece of it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this looks like and bring this light over. It it really isn't significantly different. So I don't want to do something like black on top of it. And I think I'm gonna just stick with the gray. Um, I think that thread will work good. I don't really know what to do. Um, I guess this side looks a little scarier than the other one. This is the back of bones. So why don't we go ahead. I kind of like this pattern right here. Where it doesn't look too freaky. Maybe we should go ahead and do something like that. I'm not so sure. Um, let's go ahead and let me get this position so you can see the stitching as it's happening. And let's go ahead and go to the leg. Okay. If I did a bone, I think what I would do, you can see some flowers I was playing around with, but I would do something like this. Let's go ahead and play around with a couple of eggs. Make a little loop there, a little bottle. Come down here. Do a little bone. Come back around. And there we have a bone. Bring it up. I'm hitting the back of the screen. No, that doesn't look so well. Let me come over here and try this. How about we go a little circle, come to the center of the bone, to the head of the bone, come back down, to the head of the bone, finish here, and then travel. That looks a little bit better. So we're starting the bone off in the center of it. I like maybe how that looks better. Let's just go with the bow. Okay, so this is just really my scribble area. Let's go over here. I'm gonna pull this a little tighter. Okay, let's go ahead and try this. A little circle. Come down. these red snappers right here and the lip of underneath my machine to hit that. Let me get this the camera again where it can so you can see the stitching a little bit better.
this area. I'm going to go ahead and keep long arming him and keep him moving along. But you can see, I, I actually think the green metallic thread was a good choice on here. It's giving him some texture. You can see the rest of him looks boring if it's not long armed. So I think actually long arming a panel is cute. You may not be able to tell that those are all bones, but it's something going on there. And I think he's going to look really darling. I will go ahead and um, get these out and let you guys know what these all look like after we get them long armed so i just have to long arm a couple more pieces then i will cut these out and assemble these and we will work on that tomorrow and it'll be a tutorial that's on the blog thanks so much for joining us and all of you guys that have um, that are able to watch it be replayed i hope that you enjoy it and let me know if you have any questions and we can see you on the blog. I'm at stitching, at stitches quilting, and it's Deanna Wall. And so the website is www.stitchesquilting.com. Thanks so much. Bye bye.